Present estates and future interests are two related topics, as similar as are the words now and then. The language of these topics is the source of most students' confusion. That is why for these two topics, it is super important to thoroughly understand the concepts before learning the language. We begin. O has a piece of land. There are three ways that O can transfer his land. The first way is ideal for the transferee. It is ideal because there are no restrictions, and the transferee possesses the land forever. The second way that O can transfer land is with restriction. The restriction is in the form of a condition. The transferee can own the land forever, but there is a condition. For example, if the transferee ever drinks alcohol on the land, then the transferee loses the land. Transferring land with a condition can have three variations. When the condition is met, the first variation will transfer the land back to O. The second variation might transfer the land back to O. It depends on if O chooses to take back the land. The third variation will transfer the land to someone else. The last way that O can transfer land involves a time restriction and some of the concepts that we have just mentioned. O can transfer land for a period of time, i.e. any number of years or for a lifetime. And when the time expires, the land has five possible destinations. It can go back to O. It can go to someone else. It can go to someone else with a condition, where if the condition is triggered, then the land could go back to O, or the land could go to someone new. It can go to a group, and it can go to someone else with a condition, where if the condition is triggered, then the land could go back to O, or the land could go to someone new. Wait, didn't I already say that? I did. I repeated myself to make a point, to make sure that you understand from the beginning that there are two future interests that are fundamentally the same. They may have different classifications, different names, they visually look different as I portray them here, and they can be used in different ways, but they sometimes render the same result which makes them hard to distinguish on paper. When the end result is the same, the written form of these two future interests is nearly indistinguishable. The only thing that tells them apart is the use of a comma. The illustration of the two different future interests is to give you a visual idea of how they are different. However, for now, do not stress on having a thorough understanding. It is enough for now to commit to memory that they are different, but that they could share the same outcome. Before we begin to label this diagram with a bunch of confusing names, it is important to grasp and memorize this framework. Knowing the concepts is more important than memorizing the terminology.